Hi everyone, Dr. Randall here from Altus, and what I want to discuss today is a few random thoughts I've been having on the upper limb. Now, working in, in, with sprinters and hurdlers, the lower limb seems to get all the glory. Uh, very rarely do we, and likely do we see shoulder or elbow pathology, but other sports, such as those who are rotational based or overhead athletes, they are very dependent on their upper limb. Now, in athletics, this is your javelin throwers, this is your throwers, uh, and it's also the pole vaulters. Of course, in other sports, whether it's basketball, baseball, they're all going to be dependent on similar functions of the upper limb. Now, to give this a little bit of context, I want to point everyone to a really good presentation that was done by Keith Barr. You can find this presentation on YouTube, uh, and it's entitled Physical Training, Performance, and Injury Prevention. Now, this was essentially a nutritional talk that Keith gave, but he does talk a lot about some injury mechanisms. And one of the really interesting things was his ability to kind of explain the histology and anatomy of the joint systems. Without going into too much detail, because everything, again, can be found on that, on that uh, presentation, he talks about ligaments, tendons, and the connections between muscles and tendons, so muscle tendons junctions. Um, obviously, a muscle needs, sorry, a tendon um, doesn't have as much stiffness, say, as a ligament. A ligament is connecting one bone to another bone, so having stiffness in that system is very important. Uh, with a tendon, it's a little bit more variable dynamic than that. There are areas in the tendon where stiffness is super beneficial, especially with elastic abilities. And then in other areas where you want it to have a little bit of history research or ability to kind of confirm, confirm and mold. Um, regards to that, what he talked about was this idea of collagen and being able to supplement collagen to help with tendon or ligamentous loading. Now, of course, that loading is going to be very specific on how you choose your exercises and the result you'll get. But nonetheless, it's a good way to kind of review some nutrition for some common areas. Now, coming back to the upper limb, why is this important? Well, um, the shoulder has been talked about a lot, but maybe we haven't talked so much about the elbow and wrist and how those kind of interconnect with shoulder dysfunction. We do know that grip strength is a good and is correlated with shoulder dysfunction. So as we start to see a decrease in grip strength, there is a correlation that you have some type of shoulder dysfunction. Without going into great detail, most of the time it's some type of cuff pathology. So, what does that mean about the elbow? Does the elbow control grip strength? And in fact, if you start to move your elbow in different positions, that will determine how your grip strength is. Um, in addition to that, a loss of flexion can be correlated to having shoulder dysfunction. So how do we work this area? And why is it that the wrist is also important? Again, other than grip strength, we also need to have mobility in that wrist. And again, it may not be specific for a certain sport, but the overall ability to, to demonstrate these areas is going to be crucial for the overall health of the system. So what I want to cover now is a little bit of how I would go about looking at something for articular control and maybe some range of motion for the shoulder. What would I do to help, say, the ligamentous control or increasing stability in the elbow? And how would I go about going uh, and creating a mobile wrist? Now, um, again, these are just ideas and random thoughts, but if you guys have others, please mention them and we can kind of uh, keep the conversation going. So for shoulders, um, we have talked about the 90-90 position for the lower limb a lot, and what I want to cover is maybe something we can now define as a 90-90 position for the upper limb. For this, we're going to have, we're going to be using a mace, but you could be using a dowel. In fact, I probably would recommend a dowel to start with, and then add gradual load as you become more competent with this, uh, this movement. So to start off with, we're going to have our elbows in a 90-90 position. I'm going to ask the athlete or yourself to kind of retract your shoulders back a little bit. Now, I'm not retracting the shoulders to pack them. I still think they need to have uh, mobility, but it's better so that we're able to kind of exploit the shoulder in external rotation movement. So having our shoulders back, having our hands on this dowel, all we're going to do is go through this external rotation movement where we're bringing the dowel or the mace right over your head and as back as we can. And then we'll bring it back down to its original starting position. So again, what I'm trying to gain with this is a little bit of articular control in an externally rotated movement. Now, the other thing that we can be doing, and something that baseball players have been doing quite often, obviously, uh, but in other sports, we don't really think about it that way. Uh, and that's actually throwing exercises. Now, you could be using uh, either a normal ball or a weighted ball. But what we're trying to accomplish is throwing a little bit of noise into the system so that your metastability is challenged, how your brain is connecting different movement patterns. 
Um, this is also going to be a really good way to start to work some of those ligaments in your elbow. Now, ligaments that need that stiffness, fortunately, can't happen over a short um, contraction or a short velocity. You need something that's relatively quick. Uh, throwing a baseball is one such way to doing that. So again, this could be a weighted ball or it could just be a regular ball. Standing with your feet pointing away from you, and forgive me for all the baseball players out there because this might look atrocious, but uh, we're gonna attempt to throw a ball at a wall. You can be using the other arm as reciprocal motion as you're bringing this through. You could have a target that you're trying to throw at, but having the ability to throw at a target is something that will help to challenge uh, not only that cognitive ability of an athlete and perception, but it also still gives you a little bit of work to do that elbow complex. Now finally, for the wrist, having mobility. There's a few different ways that people have developed wrist control and strength. Um, I'm trying to adopt the philosophy if you were trying to do a handstand. The things you need to do as a precursor before doing overhead work where it's going to be based on the ground is having that mobility and, and control of your wrist. So a very simple exercise to do for that. You can have yourself on the ground uh, in a quadruped position. Feet, uh, sorry, knees will be right at the wrist. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to try to keep your metacarpals on the ground, but almost do a push off or a push up with your fingers still on the ground. So you're going to come up and down like that. And you'll start to see that you start to challenge your wrist on the way down in an eccentric movement. And it might be a different way of uh, kind of activating the flexors and being able to use them in reverse uh, insertion uh, and origin orientation. Now, the second thing you can do is going to help not only the wrist, but also the elbow as well. Having our fingers towards us, you're going to be just extending your elbows out and then bringing it back. Extending out and then bringing back. Again, super easy things you can throw into either a regen day or just part of your warm up, but give those, give those a try and see how that starts to affect the whole operating system. Thanks again, guys.